What's up, y'all? Uh, we're here for our weekend reading. I've got the scene flipped. You, get, you guys get to actually see me sitting on my couch like normal. I'm usually perched up like this and my, my uh, camera is stacked in the window and my blinds are down. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I've been, had a long, busy day running around, lots of errands and things over my couple of days off. So I didn't do the uh, the Oracle and Tarot reading that I usually do on Instagram that we talk about on Friday nights. So I am going to pull it live here now and we're just gonna take it as it comes. Uh, I had a day where I was taking my mom to her doctor's appointments kind of thing. And then I actually, it's so funny, I had some manifestations come through. So I am, I do to be magnetic work I'm not like a coach for them. I just like, I'm a student. I, I'm a member of their website and I participate in their website, uh, uh, workshops and I'm doing the manifestation challenge right now and I'm dabbling. I'm not even like fully in it. I'm going way slow, but I'm, I'm, I'm really going deep and holding that in my consciousness. Like, even though I'm not, you know, consistently on top of the schedule. And I keep manifesting small things. So I really want to double down into the work and get focused so that I can manifest some big things because already I've had a surge in subscribers. So thank you to all the new people here. I uh, have manifested a bunch of smaller things like there is a large uh, gold leaf mirror that I wanted for a long time. And I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to get it. And uh, then I wanted this makeup thing called Miracle Bomb by Jones Road. And it was just one of those things where I'd like saved it in a folder, like on Instagram. And I was like, I'll order this at some point. And I got in the car today to like, to, you know, and got my mom in the car and everything. She, she'd broken her leg, she put in a boot. And uh, she was like, oh, here, I got this thing, this Miracle Bomb, but it, wasn't, it was too light for me. Here, you try it. And I was like, oh my God, I just manifested Miracle Bomb. And there were a couple of other things, like there was just like some like little like beauty products and stuff like that that I had uh, wanted. One in particular was one that the girl, Lacey Phillips, the creator and director of To Be Magnetic, had suggested this primrose oil that is really good for skin brightening and it uh, it fades dark spots or like sunspots and things. And sorry for you men who watch. Of, a, of ladies out there uh, like who might be interested in this. So it's by Sky Organics and it's rose hip oil. And I'm really liking it so far. But anyway, so I wanted to try it. They had mentioned it in one of the podcasts and I, uh, I hadn't seen it anywhere and I hadn't bothered to order it. And then it was at Walgreens this day. The other day I, I took a cut from work. I decided to like do like something like for the team, you know, and take one for the team. So like I, you know, took a cut off for the night so other people could, you know, have bigger sections. And uh, I decided just to be really abundant about it and not worry about it and just take my time. I was out in a busy side of town running errands and I was like, you know what, I should pop into Walgreens um, for all that stuff that I wanted. Even though, you know, if you go to like the drugstore, it's like 20 times more expensive. But anyway, so I was in Walgreens. I happened to see one little vial of the primrose oil that I had wanted to try. And so I grabbed it and I was like, you know what, I'm not going to overthink it. I'm just going to get it. And for some reason with my Walgreens reward card, it was like on sale for like $12.99 off. And it was like a $13 pro. I was like, this is like 99% off. Is this real? Is this right? I looked at the receipt. I was like, oh my God. So manifested that. So lots of little things coming through. Uh, but if you're interested in to be magnetic, I actually have an affiliate link below and you can get 15% off on your monthly membership if you follow mine. Um, but I just, I love their, their work. It's so cohesive for doing the psychology plus like the transformation plus like having like a, like a, like a regimen of meditations that are guided. Re it helps like heal your nervous system. There's just so many things, but as a bonus, like you get inner peace and also you manifest things like out of thin air. It's almost awesome. 
Uh, impulsiveness. Oh my gosh. So this was something that we talked about in the new moon, uh, Oracle and tarot workshop that finally got posted. <laughs> Sorry. I was busy manifesting yesterday. I was like, I can't even stop to do the thing because I am like hot and on a roll. I was like this. I was, I was impulsive yesterday, but I think it was good. So be careful not to like fall prey to destructive impulsiveness, but also like take, like use discernment, but when divine guidance comes up and gives you what to be magnetic calls a ping, it's like when you are, um, you know, you've got a goal and you feel like this hunch come up and you have like this random idea that you might need to go to a place and it might not even have anything to do with that thing. Uh, but you just, you follow those little hunches and sometimes they lead you to really kismet opportunities or, you know, um, like sometimes there will be an item that I will want at a store and I will be drawn to that store and it will be there. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, and it'll be something like one off or rare or something like that. So, you know, you follow these pings. Sometimes it will be like, for instance, when I was leaving film, I was looking for a really good job to to have that wouldn't drain me, but it would be a good transition job while I like built this channel and built my tarot practice and built my brand up. And I followed pings and it they all paid off. It was like my niece and uh, my nephew and his wife, my niece-in-law, uh, they had started working at this place um, that they really liked, this restaurant. It was a great side of town. It was like close to where I live, but it wasn't like in my neighborhood. Um, it was like the neighborhood over. And yeah, there was just like so many things about it that I wanted. It was like the perfect hours. It was like, you know, pretty easy, like great crew, you know, it was just like turned out to be this great job. Well, I just had this ping to like go there on a new moon. And I walked in and I asked for the manager that I'd been told to ask for. And he was like, yeah, that's me. And I was like, hey, and I just asked about the job. Basically, I was like, hey, I'm Liz. Like I was looking for, you know, start working here. And he's like, how many shifts? And I was like, this many. And he's like, great, when do you start? It was that easy, it was so crazy. So it's like following those pings, you know, sometimes you realize, oh, that was a that you know I overthought that I that was just me like wanting to do that and then you find out like oh maybe it was a dead end or something or a dead maybe you don't know until later that it was but you don't know until you try and it takes practice to start like hearing that voice and recognizing it when it's that voice and when it's just like you thinking like ooh maybe I should go buy a lottery ticket today kind of thing and you're like oh man and you know so yeah it, it's very subtle it's very um very distinct though. Once you get to know it, you're like, ooh, ooh, okay. I, I trust that. Uh, so this is Mars in Aries. So this is the epitome of the essence of Aries. I was just watching um, or listening rather to a, a Kabbalah class yesterday and the we were talking about the core desire of each sign, and it has to do with like your soul correction in this life. Um, so it will, you know, drive you in positive ways and maybe in destructive ways. But the one for Aries was to do, uh, and Aries is the baby of the Zodiac. My, my teacher was like, think about it. A baby is always wanting to do something like they're a toddler is always wanting, I want the next candy. I want the next stimulus. I want the next toy. I want to do this. I want to get up. I don't want to lay down. I don't want to take a nap. I am this Aries. I am do, 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 do. I don't want to relax until it's time to relax. And that is the doing. <laughs> and even then I'm like, I have to be made or be too tired to go on. But yes, there is this, I mean, our daily pick a card today was Ace of Wands. And so, you know, it's that surge of impulsivity, but like an inspiration to want to act and create. It's that spark that, that uh, launches a new beginning. So yeah, this new beginning, we're starting this cycle, we're in January. We're, I love that universe had this timeline jump line up like perfectly into like this comfortable new year um, on January 1st on a Monday. It's just like so ah, crisp. 
But yeah, so it's like we're being rebirthed. Here is Aries, the birth of the zodiac, the baby, the birth of the self, the birth of consciousness. Uh, the north node of the moon is in Aries right now. So we're all getting this sense of uh, rebirth of self, reinvention, looking at ourselves in a new way, taking ourselves more seriously, getting more focused and, and getting really clear about like who it is that we are and how we want to really show up and, 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 and share with this world and leave our mark on it. So in a sense, follow that divine guidance and act upon it because, you know, the timing, when timing meets preparedness, that's when luck happens. I've got this horseshoe here that's gathering all of this good blessing and fortune and good luck. So, You know, we were talking, I think it was in yesterday's pick a card about like rehearsing the positive outcome over and over and over again until the opportunity presents. And then it's like, you're less likely to choke. You're less likely to be indecisive. You're less likely to be indecisive because you haven't given yourself a choice. You've rehearsed and choreographed you know, successfully meeting an opportunity. And it's not like you're not doing it in a way that's controlling. You're still open to the way it shows up, but you are not leaving any room for yourself to second guess, right? You are go, you're prepared when it, sh when it turns up. Um, and then the last thing I will say about this is that I think we should be careful not to fall prey to the shadow side or our self-destructive nature to be impulsive. Because one of the things that the Capricorn new moon is helping us do right now in this like womb of winter while we're still finishing out like the natural seasonal year of last year, the energetic year of last year, it's like we're sitting here in our womb incubating, you know, allowing the, like the death kind of happens during the fall. And right now we're in that, that void, right? Like when Jesus was in the underworld facing the shadow, facing the, op the opponent, the enemy, you know, it just so happens that Capricorn is the devil card and, and Capricorn is one of those months, Kabbalistically speaking, where it is, where we have less protection from the light of the creator. And so, you know, it's just more dark outside. There's darkness everywhere. And literal darkness, like, breeds, like, energetic darkness. It's like the darkness kind of, like, comes out in, the, in those, in, during the nighttime hours. These, uh, these are the less positive hours of the day because they have less light in them. So there's something about physical light actually being, you know, a presence of actual source light. Isn't that interesting? Um... So yeah, so this is this this time of void and limbo. And so now it's like Capricorn wants us to get serious and get focused and get grounded and get practical about our dreams. We can't just get excited and be all willy-nilly. We have to be focused. We have to hone in and really trim the fat and edit out and hone our precious time and our energy and our resources into what is going to yield us the greatest value and the greatest long-term fulfillment and the greatest, um, you know, high value return. So don't be impulsive and make costly mistakes. Don't be impulsive and sell yourself short. Don't be impulsive and rush into anything that is not going to be in alignment with your long-term vision. Um, don't reach for instant gratification at the cost of what is really going to serve you and really going to give you deep fulfillment in the long term. Okay, let us grab two more Radiant Sun Oracle cards. I love this Oracle deck. It's awesome. Okay, what do we have? Ooh, birth. Oh my gosh, you guys, like how on the nose is it? So here we have our rebirth of spirit. We're like all excited to get go, you know, gung ho, guns blazing, slow down, you know, take calculated and, you know, divinely guided steps, but really, you know, crystallize your vision, get really crystal clear and really let it solidify before you feel like you need to rush forward and make things happen. If you're feeling like still tired and like kind of like, uh, sit with that and use that time to get creative and, you know, 
plan and prepare and get your ducks in a row because the birth is happening and this is Venus in, in Cancer. So it is quite literally, bom, chicka, bom, bom. <laughs> get that birth going. Look at this baby though. I mean, that's kind of how I feel right now. I am feeling like, oh my gosh, like little baby crab, like let me in my shell. Everyone just let me be the introvert that I want to be. <laughs> so what do we have here? I've never had this card, but I can just like tell you what I'm getting is that, you know, we've got Oh, the sun and the moon right now, mother, father healing, Capricorn is the opposite of cancer. So we just had that cancer full moon at Christmas that dredged up a lot of sensitivity and a lot of mother healing that went on. Now we have Capricorn, which is the father of the cosmos. Um, we are, you know, like having a good sit down with dad right? This is not the disciplinary Capricorn. This is the dad that's like, all right, like, you know, what's next for you? Let's get a vision going. How's, how are, how's the order of your life? How are your windshield wipers? <laughs> is your oil changed? Are you filing your taxes anytime soon? Like, you know, get that, those things in order. Like, what is your goal? What is your plan? What is your vision? What do you think is the next practical thing you need to, to do to do that? Okay. Are you surrounding yourself with good people? Do you have good friends? Are you dating good people who are, you know, a positive challenge for you? And, you know, you know, at your equally yoked with you, like think about positive talk with like the dream dad who's really trying to help you get your shit in order. That's the caring father. So I see that here. And I see this angel of temperance here in the central column. So we have the right hand column of mercy in the tree of life. And then we have the left pillar column, which is the pillar of judgment and severity. So these are the, the columns that we sway through. It's like either we're in mercy, we're having blessing, or we're in judgment. We're having to correct our negativity in order to get back over into the, to the mercy. Well, when we're, you know, on, the, on either side, it's like we're always these swinging pendulums. And so our work in, in Kabbalah is to solidify that central pillar, that central column. <clears throat> the central column is when we've brought these all of these other um, governing forces in, and reconciled them and brought them into balance. And they're in a virtuous state. And so the central column is when we get these other governing forces in order, it's like that's when we ascend in consciousness and we become balanced and stable um, and tempered, right? So this is kind of reminding me of the angel of temperance here when the angel of temperance is present, it's like you have integrated the knowledge and the wisdom and the experience and you're starting to, you know, act out in your material life with your spirituality in hand. You are embodying this, your spiritual wisdom and your spiritual guidance. Um, and that is bringing like stability and serenity into your life. Um, it's like this angel is also standing over. It's like the angel is holding this. This looks like the time egg from Sabrina. Chilling tells of Sabrina. I don't know if anybody's seen that. Season three during the Eldridge terrors. This is like something that opens up a time portal, a time warp. And it's funny too, because we are giving birth to this new rebirth, this timeline jump, this this new um, storyline for ourselves. And it's like, even though, you know, in a way, it's like we're this baby down here, we're being rebirthed. We're not ready to come out of this cave yet. We're like, no, no, not yet. Um, I'm feeling too sensitive. I'm feeling way too exposed. I'm feeling too new. I'm too, I'm too fresh. I need to get my consciousness solid before I go out into the harsh conditions that can throw me back into effect consciousness, right? Because we want to stay in cause consciousness, especially during this birth. You know, when we're, we're at the seed level of a new beginning here. And so our consciousness at the seed level is very important. It's the most important thing. 
We want to birth this new cycle from a seed level consciousness of like, you know, great expectation and potential and unconditional certainty and love and, you know, strength and perseverance and sharing and giving and, um, compassion and strength and wisdom and discernment, right? It's strong boundaries and, and optimism and faith that it's, you know, things can be great, you know, and, and, and positive expectation and anticipation. So this angel is standing over here going like, yes, okay. So the harsh conditions are just outside. And I am, I'm, I'm holding this space over you. I'm surrounding you in light and protection. And, you know, right now it's like, stay, you know, spend time in isolation, preparing your consciousness for these new experiences that are, that are going to present opportunities to fall back into patterns. But instead you have rehearsed, like we talked about earlier, rehearsing, yourself successfully getting through these situations in new ways. You know, um, if you know that you are going to see a person that you have had um, difficult relationship dynamics with, instead of going to that uh, meet up or event and, or whatever it is and knowing that you're gonna have to play that out again and again and again and dreading it, instead just rehearse yourself doing it differently. And, we're, and see it in your mind going differently. And maybe it will, maybe it'll go better, but either way, you will be showing up differently when you get there. We're rebirthing, we're birthing something new. Venus in Cancer is like a, an expansion of love and abundance and beauty in your most inner circles, um, a feeling of security and safety. Um, and, and as your abundance and your love expands, you know, it's expanding beauty in your life in literal ways and in those, you know, poetic uh, metaphysical ways. Um, but yeah, I think this is really good. I think for like the number four is associated with Jupiter. There's a lot of expansion going on with Jupiter right now too. So I think that's really good. Just really beautiful things expanding within your household. It's funny too, because in the, the new moon and Capricorn workshop and our Oracle manifestation reading for last week, or where are we at? Friday, so it was for this week. We um, pulled the protection card that everything was safe and protected. And, you know, maybe you have circumstances that are uncertain right now, and that is frightening, and you're being reassured that everything is good. But maybe you're, re you're in a moment where there's nothing particularly strenuous, and there's nothing particularly grand, and you're like, it's almost eerie. And you're like, is this ominous? I don't know what's happening. And it's like another like reassurance like don't worry like things are protected things are good things are fine so let yourself relax a little bit um oh my gosh this is another card i've never seen from this deck quarrel and this is another four here too this is mars in cancer so wow it's like maybe we're getting past an upset that had happened in the home Maybe we are moving past con uh, conflicting relationship dynamics that started at home or that erupt at home. It's like both of these characters are fighting for the ring of power and they're butting heads over, you know, who's, who's going first. Oh, seems like a couple of planets were squaring uh, squaring off this week, but I don't know what they are. Uh, I'm not going to get into it. Then <laughs> make this video too long, but yes, I feel that avoid your impulsiveness that could lead to a quarrel because we're rebirthing new cycles. It's not that you're always going to be silencing yourself and not speaking your truth, but you're going to be doing it in a conscious way when you're not emotional, when it's not in the moment, when you could go back later and when things are not like 
triggered, you can have the conversation once you've thought about it and you've chosen like your conscious way of approaching this, the subject with compassion and kindness and good intentions. Right, but there's never really any positive things that can come with just flat out like being combative or quarreling or bickering or fighting or, you know, le like adding to, to more and more separation. Sometimes there there is a time where we have to speak up and, you know, we have to like fight for what's right. Um, but it's never in a way that's just like petty arguing, right? Um, or making something a battle when it doesn't have to be. So there's always a conscious way to meet conflict, but it doesn't have to be quarreling. All right. And then, yeah, and then maybe this is just getting on the other side of a quarrel and, and having a rebirth after that. Ooh, excitement. So lots of exciting energy in the air, folks. It could be getting us a little bit angsty and, you know, like, hey, hey, everybody, like, you know, settle down. There's ladies present. Uh, so excitement. Mercury is in Gemini. Three. The, the three card. And why do I feel like three is also associated with Gemini? I don't know why. So very much uh, a lot of excitement, a lot of communication, a lot of clarity and ideas and like the ability to now like put those ideas into words and then put them into action. So very exciting. It's like the birth of this new cycle. Um, you know, the, there's, the, the opponent is always going to be here ready to be right up in our face every second. Like, hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> are you trying to succeed? Like, ah, 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 ah. not reacting, not reacting, staying calm, not quarreling. So just know that anticipate your opponent's moves. How does the devil pull your strings? Have you gotten to know your demons? <laughs> How do they fuck with you? How do they use other people to fuck with you? That is a new level to get aware of. That is defense against the dark arts, people. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when you literally can recognize your demons puppeting other people who, who don't have total sovereign control over themselves, right? When people are reactive and when they're in effect consciousness and they're not thinking and they don't have their wits about them, they are, you know, open to being controlled or, you know, influenced by something that's like, hey, say this, <laughs> do that, you know, it, it's true. So anticipate your opponent because we're up leveling and we are beginning this new cycle and we don't want to start it off with conflict and separation that does not bear affinity with the light and that will take us out of the light's protection and out of the flow of blessings not because the light takes it back not because the light is judging the light is always ever flowing but we are the vessel and we have to open our vessel and we have to sustain the container and when we do not sustain the container and when we close off the vessel, we can't connect with the light. It's like we're not like we're not tuned into the radio station anymore. It's just there's there's certain laws of spirituality that are like just like the laws of physics, not I mean, there are their own laws, but like they're they're non-negotiable and that's just the way they are. So it's like if you know how the system works, then essentially you can work the system. You can work within it at least. Ah, uh, okay, yes. So let's cl get some clarification with the Dreaming Way Tarot. It's been warm most of the day, but like the temperature is like dropping rapidly right now. Okay, so we've got Nine of Wands in reverse. So I feel that in the reverse position, this is like coming to the end of a very long cycle of a pattern that has been very difficult to break. And so this is a pattern of like falling prey to your impulsivity because this is the card that's coming out underneath um, the impulsiveness card. Now going back to the Tikkun wound of Aries, it's their, their core desire is to do, to do, to do. Now that's a strength and it can also be a shadow. And so in the shadow side of it, it's that impulsiveness, that 
that that's the self-destructive impulsiveness like um you know impulse shopping when you want to when your goal is to like save up for something specific or um you know impulsively like still sleeping around or like getting into casual um, intimacies with people and really you want to have like a long-term devoted committed relationship but like all your energy is spent like doing that whole thing right so like think about impulsive behaviors right if you're an impulsive eater or an impulsive smoker or if you just like think th there are so many things that are so much more subtle that that are that are damaging to us that we don't even realize like subtly obsessing over something that is maybe benign but it's like taking how many minutes and hours of your day like i keep getting like this image in my head of somebody like obsessing over like the mundane minutia of like did i pay that bill or like thinking like like just oh, almost too much like you keep going there and and you're like oh i could be doing something else like you could be focused in on something that is driving your dreams forward so yeah like impulsively procrastinating by like perfectionistically cleaning the house when you could be doing that writing project so this is like old habits are hard to break but it is so powerful and valuable to break those now. So you can start this new cycle on the right foot. And I feel like also nine of one, like it, it's either that you're still resisting something, but it's just a little bit. Like I feel like this is both saying that like, yes, we've really come so far and like we're finally over the hump of this. Um, we've really conquered this, but there's still just a little hint of that. So just, just always keep your eye on it because it's just enough to be dangerous as you're going forward. Like we can never completely, you know, rise above some of these tendencies that we have. They're, they're just parts of our personality, but we can certainly cultivate them into ways that they can make us, they can become strengths. We can watch that tendency, you know, and just be aware of it, be self-aware. Um, and, and then also, you know, just in, accept that that's, that's a part of us um, and that it's there and not to beat ourselves up over it, but definitely to, you know, take self, you know, ownership over it and, you know, master that, make an effort to, I mean, there are some, like, some parts of, like, self-mastery is not a one and done. It's like a constant exercise. It's like if you were uh, mastering martial arts, it's not like you just stay good at it if you stop practicing it you get rusty um you may be able to pick it up again really fast because you have memory um but you know it's like something that like you you need to keep your strength you need to keep your flexibility you know you need to keep your your speed your agility and your your senses sharp <clears throat> so yeah self-mastery is always something that we have to stay aware of and on top of queen of swords um is under is clarifying our birth card so this is the queen of swords is shrewd she is like looking she's clear she's she's got absolute clarity she is not suffering any fools she looks straight at it tells t sees it like it is tells it like it is and is not easily won over by others the queen of swords doesn't trust easily and doesn't bring others into her inner circle easily but once she does it's like you are in and like she's got your back and she's like a fierce contender so this is also someone who is great at communicating their ideas someone who's witty and sharp and smart and funny and observant this is someone who has lived through, like, has gained experience from, like, a long life lived. This is someone, it doesn't necessarily have to be an age. Like, this can be a person who's lived a thousand lives as a teenager, right? I've always been that person. I've always been, like, I've lived a thousand lives as, like, <laughs> I was such an old, like, person as a young person. But, you know, and the Queen of Swords has possibly had a many difficulties and disappointments um, in the past. This is many times an unmarried woman um, uh, or a divorced person uh, who may or may not have kids, but who has learned a lot 
from the difficulties of their past and who has integrated that in a very strong way into wisdom. And so this person is many times a public speaker or um, a leader in some way, but yeah, the, the Queen of Swords can come off a little cool, but she's actually very warm underneath. It's just, this is, this is not someone who just like lets anyone in because she's learned that trust is something that is earned by, by others. They, you don't give it away blindly um, without, you know, anything to base it on. All right, let's get some clarity around the quarrel. And this could be too, you know, speaking of that quarrel, it's like maybe you as the maybe you're the queen of swords and you know, things are coming up and you've got to address them in ways that are like be wise about the way that you address them. Don't be too sharp because it could lead to a quarrel. Um, Ace of Swords came up and that was basically to clarify like, yeah, like don't be too sharp with your words. Don't be too cold. Um, the Ace of Swords, I, I don't know if I pulled it out and then I was like that or whatever, but just, it, you know, taking a note, if it was in reverse, it's like not being, um, not leaving room for misunderstanding. Like, you know, things may not go, like there may be some turbulence in the beginning um, is a, as many times like a way to look at an Ace of Swords reversed. The Ace of Swords upright though is like clarity and a new mindset and a fresh start. And you know, it's, it's a clarification card that says yes, if you're asking a question. But I feel like, there's something about this fresh start that has, there's something, there, the air is being cleared and it come, may come through a coral. Um, but I feel like it's getting you to the other side of it. There's even imagery in these cards that look like, like, like light after the storm, like storm clouds breaking. So I feel like there's just, if there is some kind of coral that happens, try not to get too upset. Um, you know, stay calm throughout because it's not that big of a deal, but it will be if you pop off. It will be if you are cold or like where words are many evil is there. So don't, don't say more than you need to and be conscious about what you say and how you say it. The magician and the star. So we can be very intentional here. Oh my gosh. So the excitement here, which is interesting because it's mercury. The magician is Gemini, Mercury and Gemini. The magician is Mercury and Gemini associated. We've got the star card, healing, dreams coming true, um, hope, right? Literally making our dreams come true. It's the freaking magician card of we have all that we need, all our resources are at our fingertips here. We have everything that we need to make what we want a reality. We are getting excited. We're getting impassioned. We're ready. Like we're clear. We've got a clear vision. We're ready to manifest. Now it's getting out of the, out of the idea phase and into the taking action phase, but we've got everything we need to manifest our dreams and our goals and our healing and all of it and find great fulfillment. And that's what's assured at the end of this reading <laughs> underneath excitement. It's like, get excited. You're about to make your dreams come true. And it's going to be because of all the healing work that we've did, done underneath that's making the outer efforts that we are putting our hands to successful. So continue to do the self-sacrifice and it makes your outer actions that much more successful. All right, y'all. I feel really good about this. I will see y'all tomorrow for our Secret Teachings of Jesus video. It's our Saturday night secret sermon that I usually put up after midnight. And if I get a chance to tomorrow, I would really like to start filming the 2024 predictions series. I know I keep saying that. There, today was a very busy day. Um, it wasn't, didn't really belong to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's okay. Uh, it was a good sacrifice. It was a positive sacrifice. And it was a good time to spend with my mom. We had fun. And then I got all kinds of fun goodies. Uh, and I didn't get to make all of our content and things today, but that's okay. That was a 
That was a good exercise of trusting the universe that I don't have to do, 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 because I'm an Aries too. And so it's hard for me to allow myself the time to really relax because I always feel like I need to be doing something. So that was kind of, even though it, it was a perceived failure to me as an Aries, it's actually a success in overcoming my tikkun because I am valuable and worthy even if I don't get everything done that I wanted to do in a day. So, and so are you guys. All right, y'all, uh, let me know in the comments what's going on and I will see y'all soon. Ciao.